This week's episode of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast is brought to you by listeners like you. Head on over to patreon.com slash run, eat, drink podcast and subscribe today. Fans, founders, and insiders like you help us keep the Run, Eat, Drink podcast going. And we thank you for your support. What's up? This is James. Hey, y'all. It's Sarah. And we are from the Mouse Ears and Magic podcast. And today you're listening to Dana and Amy of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. Enjoy. Welcome to the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We feature destination races from across the country. And after the race, we take you on a tour of the best local food and beverage to celebrate. So whether you are an elite runner or a back of the packer like us, you'll know the best places to accomplish, explore, and indulge on your next runcation. Hey, welcome to episode 147 of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. Our story, the 2021 New Year's edition. And I'm your host, Amy, of course. And I'm your co-host, Dana. Happy New Year, everybody. I know yeah. that we, we were wishing preliminary Happy New Year's on our Facebook and Instagram lives last oh, yeah. week. But- and last week with Jeff's interview, we were trying to roll out 2020 and then roll into 2021 the right way. Absolutely. It's, oh. But it's here now. I think I've only written the old year, the year no. that we will not <laughs> talk about anymore. But I think I've only written that on four documents I had signed for work today. So oh. tomorrow I'm shooting for three. Okay. Try to phase it out in, yeah. in my muscle memory as I'm writing. Okay. But yes, it is 2021. I am super excited to see what this new year has in store for us and for us to take some affirmative steps towards making it an amazing year. Yes, let's make it an amazing year. We actually, yesterday we already made it a terrific start to the year by participating in a live stream with a whole bunch of other podcasters. Yesterday was a was a whole day of podcasting and live streaming and It was incredible. I loved it. Watching the live stream uh, and it was an all day affair. I if only every day could be like that. Why don't you tell people what what the deal was? Yeah. So, well, first, and this is kind of like a pre announcement. We were we recorded an episode with a fellow running podcast that will be out a little bit later this in, in this January. I think mm-hmm. they didn't give me a specific date. And so we're super excited to cross over with another running podcast. And when that date gets closer, we'll be announcing more about it. Yeah. So that's a little teaser. Super excited. They are fantastic people. Fabulous runners. It was such a fun conversation, too. It was just like a bunch of friends hanging out. Yeah. I'd I'd, I'd do a Zoom chat with them anytime. Oh, sure. Zoom call. Me too. Whatever it is. Yeah. But... Here's hoping that live races return so we could actually run with them in a race. Absolutely. Yeah. And have a post-race beer together. Then we actually participated in a YouTube channel with another set of fellow runners. And that, I believe, is live out there on YouTube. And it's the Crescent Lake Club episode Three And I'm pretty sure they're on Twitch as well. And it's YouTube. It's, yeah, it's the Crescent Lake Club. And then I Twitch, I'm still new to. I Yeah, it's twitch.tv slash Crescent Lake Club, all one word. Mm-hmm. And then youtube.com slash channel slash a whole lot of stuff. We're going to have a link in the show notes. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, it's kind of like our YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> we have a big old long <laughs> string of numbers and letters and stuff. It was just so great to be live with them and talk about Ryan Runs Disney was a part of that. Their spectator crew was a part of that. We got uh, Long Runs and Liquor Meredith. <laughs> long Runs and Liquor on Instagram. Love it. Meredith. I'm just like remembering ever they're flashing before my eyes and it, I'm remembering the screen and where they were in like a tic-tac-toe board fashion. I mean, uh, we had Keels, we had Ryan Teets, we had 
Angela, and they were just fantastic. And I can't remember laughing harder than that. It's been a long time since I had a good laugh over running stories like that. Yeah, yeah. It was good to hear other people's running stories and then get to share some of our own. And oh. it, it was a absolute blast. It's a yeah. fun, fun chat to listen to. Yes. Go check that out. Yeah. But I want to have them, on, all of them on our show. Oh, yeah. I just, that was such a good feeling or even better have them on our show and do a run Disney weekend with them. So oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. And dangerous, mm. but mostly fun. I think the funnest kind of danger. Oh, yeah. If you will. <laughs> was that grammatically correct? Not even close. But no. that's okay. The most fun you can have living dangerously on a run Disney weekend. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> but that wasn't all. I digress. That, that That's a lot to do in one day. But I then, know. But then you I know. tripled down. Yes. Because our friend, James J. Williams, he has been for the last few weeks working his tail off. He is the host of the Mouse Ears and Magic podcast. They go live at 5 Eastern every Sunday on YouTube and Facebook. Yeah, they simulcast as they're recording uh, on YouTube. Yeah. And, I believe, Facebook. Yeah. Both. So, like, we, we haven't ever done that yet. It's coming. It's Goals. Coming. I'm going to update everybody on the progress of the, of the studio in a bit. but Sure. And then that will dovetail into what may be coming in 2021, but... Fantastic, but we started... More about this. It's a 12-hour live stream to raise funds for the cast member pantry, and we're annual pass holders at Disney. We make no secret that any time we've done a virtual race in 2020 last year, we can say last year, Yes, <laughs> we have made it a destination, and we've been lucky enough to have Disney as a destination to do that. Yeah, you know, we are not a Disney podcast by nature, but because of our proximity to Disney and our ability to go up with basically just a, a, a quick morning drive, mm -hmm. we can either go up, do something same day and be back home mm -hmm. or find lodging and stay up there for a day or two. Stay with friends. Either way. So yeah. it, we, we are fortunate to be able to feature as much Disney as we do because this is also a destination location for people on vacations yeah. and who... For those people that want to participate in run Disney events. Yeah. For runcations, it's a destination. It, and it truly gave us the running bug, which we'll get into later. But this 12-hour live stream was to support the cast member pantry. And that organization supports not only now Florida Disney cast members, Walt Disney World cast members, but also Disneyland cast members now very recent addition they're they're supporting those who have been furloughed laid off let go because of recent events in the pandemic it could have been because of restricted capacity that disney had to adhere to and then, shutdowns I was saying, in california, in california. Just a flat out shutdown mm -hmm. so james j williams he wanted to do, that man has a heart of gold. Absolutely. He wanted to do something for those people who have given us pixie dust and magic through all sorts of avenues and all sorts of inspiring stories that we heard throughout the live stream yesterday. But just to shout out, and I think I'm going to get them all, of course, there's the Mousers and Magic podcast, Walt's Apartment, and Pete McDevitt, which I, I believe is a YouTube channel, the Disney DNA podcast, United We Fan, This Dis Life, Everyday Magic, Wolf and Wookie, Custom Boutique by Lisa, and us. Yeah, we got. I to think actually, I think I got it all. We got to jump on twice. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you like the most fun hour. If you go and you find the live stream, all of it is one big recording, I think, on, on YouTube. It's in two pieces on the Mouse Ears and Magic Facebook page. Yes, because they discovered the upper limit of what 
Facebook will allow, and that is eight hours of yeah. continuous streaming. Uh huh. So they they have to start another one for the last four hours. So our proper hour, I guess. I mean, the hour that we actually got to host that hour. We were assigned that hour. It's. Uh, not the first hour. The first hour was the kickoff hour. The second hour was the Thunderdome mm-hmm. with Mark from This Is Life podcast. And then we, I mean, like we had to follow the Thunderdome. Oh, stop. <laughs> I, <laughs> we had a great time sharing our stories of times where cast members really made a difference for us yes. and because of our frequent trips there we had several stories to tell yeah one quite embarrassing for me and you're just gonna have to <laughs> listen to it to hear that story uh-huh but then we jumped back on late in the evening like eight o'clock it was the eight o'clock hour so we're in the first recording on facebook and then we're also in the second recording on facebook on the one of the first couple of hours when you restart that it was like a game show. I felt like we were boxes in the Brady Bunch, if you look at the video. Yeah, and the game was like, would you rather, or basically pick one. If one has to stay, one has to go, and then yeah. everybody would, we, we'd go around and debate it. And it, it was great. It, it turned into some joke cracking, and it was a blast. And it gave me ideas for 2021. Oh, yeah. To be honest. I mean, that was inspirational. James J. Williams, Sarah, his wife... They, uh, Mark Valentine, dude, just everybody. I can't thank you all enough. And when I get really excited and energized and inspired or I get really emotional, I tend to forget details and names. And But you know who you are. And you're all incredible people. And you all came together for an amazing cause and inspired the heck out of me. And I just, it, that is the way to kick off the new year. Absolutely. For sure. So that was a great way to, to start yesterday or to start the new year for us yesterday. And then heading into today and today's episode, we are starting 2021 yeah. fresh. Yeah. So yesterday that was, we're recording on Monday and this is yesterday we did all of this on Sunday. Yes, so right. we, we recorded all of the stuff we've been talking about was the third. Today is yeah. the fourth as we are recording. And this episode will drop in the feed the morning of January 5th. Yes. So for those of you who are looking at maybe doing your New Year's resolutions, Some maybe, are. maybe Some you're not it. into that, mm-hmm. calling it that properly, but you mm-hmm. want to start fresh for the new year. We, we like to do that too. Yes. And we did this last year and it really kind of centered everybody and gave everybody a good idea where we're coming from, what our point of view is. Yeah. So we're going to do it again and kind of tell our story. Yeah. Tell you about us, how we got into this and the running and the Mm -hmm. food and nutrition and what we do. And And if we've picked up some new listeners and new followers along the way here in in the last part of the... uh, 2020, this is a great way for you to get to know us a little better. And if you didn't get 52 episodes back in the feed, well, now's your chance to get caught up. There you go. And then after that, we are going to fulfill some a, a request that was made of us. Several. When we put it out to the Runcation Nation, the Runcation our listeners Nation. on social media. Yep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We put it everywhere. With our food options. And we're going to be talking about uh, pre-run and breakfast food option. Mm-hmm. And this is a recipe day. Yay. So today we're talking about something that you can make at home and something we make at home. Mm-hmm. A and, staple. And the same goes for the beverage. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now, th- so that was requested of us in terms of food and beverage for breakfast, for pre-run. We haven't focused a whole lot of, on that in right. our show. But then we were also inspired by some of the uh, the television networks. Sometimes they'll do, here are cooking shows with healthy recipe, recipes. I can't even talk, Right. Healthy recipes to start your year off right. This is the time of year where you see them all day long, 24-7, Cooking Channel, TLC, Food Network. So we picked up some ideas. Uh, That's what I like about seeing some of those shows is picking those up and saying, 
what can we do to make that something that will satisfy us and inspire us in a healthy way? So this is stuff that you guys are going to be able to do at home and whether you are wanting it to be adult or, or not. not, it's going to be okay. That's yeah. actually a request that we've had a good bit is, mm-hmm. hey, don't forget about us non-drinkers. Right. And we do a lot of coffee and, we and do. tea and all that, but this is going to be something different. So I'm very excited. Yeah. So you ready to get started? Let's go, man. Well, chapter one in the beginning. There was the running portion of our show. And the the running portion of our show, the the our story twenty twenty one New Year's edition, uh, that we're actually doing this, and we're putting off an interview that we mentioned last week till next yes. week. Yes, because it's going to dovetail nicely into that. Yes, I think we are in the middle of just two inspirational interviews. This episode, is. yes, because last week we had Jeff Galloway and his inspiration for staying motivated especially now, especially throughout last year, and how to push forward in a positive way. And next week, we'll have more tools and more inspiration that you can use. And something that can help keep you motivated and moving throughout 2021. Absolutely. But this week, let's talk about how this started. And I don't know, we we could start with you getting us into running, if you'd like. And then we can dovetail that into my health issues and yeah. What all happened with that? Well, I would say, and I will tell you that you may hear bits that you heard at the beginning of 2020 if you go back and you look at episode or listen to episode 95, which was our story back then. Mm-hmm. I just, when I was diagnosed with a detached retina in my left eye. And I had to have surgery on it. That was some of the scariest stuff for me because I had never gone under anesthesia. I had never, well, first they said they were going to keep me in a twilight. They were going to keep me awake to repair it. And I was scared to death. But they, from the diagnosis to the surgery was a 24-hour turnaround because that is such a serious condition that can cause blindness if it's not taken care of as soon as possible and this came on for you not the as a result of any trauma you were nope. just driving down the road and went wow, yeah this, just, eye, this eye is blurry yeah well i was seeing little blurry like floater white it's almost like you're seeing snow but then in, in different parts of your eye oh it's there and i thought it was like maybe my contact had gone bad i had a tear or some dirt or something like that but no it wasn't that so I, I went to the doctor, and that's the diagnosis I got. So then the, basically the next day. The next day I was in there, and they said, well, we think it's a pretty bad tear, a pretty, de- pretty bad. You're going to be in surgery for longer than we anticipated, so we're going we're gonna to put you under anesthesia. So they wheel you in, and you have to kind of – Move yourself from one table to another. Well, that's not fun when you're almost 300 pounds. And it's even more embarrassing when you look up and a student of yours that you taught when she was in 10th grade, I don't know, a decade ago, is now your your nurse who actually saw you win the golden apple for excellence in teaching and at gosh almost a hundred pounds less it's tough it's tough it's sad it's frustrating so when i came home from that experience and recovered and my vision thank goodness for those doctors for my regular eye doctor, for the retinal specialist, the surgeon who restored my vision. I knew that I wanted to take that second chance I had been given and get healthier. So I I started eating better and lost some weight and wanted to celebrate in a different way other than just going out and buying a new outfit. 
mm-hmm. something that was going to move me forward. So I said to you, let's, we're going down to the Keys for a vacation. We started to talk about it in the car on the way down. What if we start running? How my, my dad, I saw my dad growing up. I saw him run and and lose a, a ton of weight. Yeah. And he was happy. He was healthy. It moved him forward, kept him fit, kept him able to coach football and track and all of that. So, yeah, I asked you and you said, okay. And so we started with a, a local 5K after we started on a treadmill with Nikes that we purchased from an outlet. Yeah, a- <laughs> not knowing any better, just figuring, hey, yeah. we'll go grab some shoes those, from an outlet. And those seem good. These fit nicely and they feel lots, good. Lots of people love them. And then you learn real quick the importance of going to a real running store, getting a gait analysis done, and having the proper shoe for you. And mm-hmm. that actually was what kept me running past that 5K. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, the lesson in that, in, in our history, in our story is... Go to a store that specializes in analyzing your gait and fitting you for the type of feet and your running gait and your walking gait, whatever it is. Make sure that you have great supportive shoes so that you can be successful. And we did, thanks to Rachel at the Run Shop. Yes. So so we did, and we got into that 5K, and we were feeling good. We didn't die. We didn't die. We wanted to go further. And so we had heard of these run Disney events and wanted to do one. So I came home to you and said, do you want to take a trip to Disney and run a a half marathon relay where we split it? It's not bad. We're going to split it. So I'm thinking six and a half miles. I can do that. I just did three. I can do six and a half. And I said, but it's not really – so, well, I mean, we registered, and then we go and we look at where the split is going to happen. It's going to happen – the first runner does my five miles, and then the second runner does eight. 8.1. Point, okay. Let's be clear. All right. So, you sacrificed for us and said, I'll take the longer distance. I did. And I was so grateful. So, we did that, and that was where we really caught – the running bug, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. There was just something magical about that type of an event. The crowd, I never experienced that. The The fact that we were doing it at Disney at night, and they were keeping the Food and Wine Festival open after hours. Uh, it gave you something to look forward to. Yeah. And it was just, it was a lot of fun. And I said, yeah, I could do this. These runners around us, I mean, they didn't care if you were fast or slow. And they're, I mean, there's race etiquette, of course. But they were encouraging, inspiring, and just, I mean, I can remember when I got done with my leg and then I saw you briefly at the exchange and then you went. I can remember a runner coming behind me after that while I was waiting for the bus to take me to where you would finish. And she said, I want you to know that you were my inspiration because you kept running and I always kept you in my sight ahead of me. And as long as you kept running, I knew I could do it. That's awesome. And that was incredible. Yeah. That is awesome. And we talk about one of our wine and dine experiences in episode 87. Yes. That is a more, that is the last time that we ran a true run Disney race at Walt Disney World. Yeah. We were not doing the podcast back then. This is our, our initial entree into running predates the podcast by many years yeah oh, like seven or eight yeah so, <laughs> right. so seven. episode 87 is our yeah. last time at the wine and dine half marathon check that one out it's a That's great episode inspirational because that was an unexpected pr and it kind of gives you an idea of here's here's how we break down a race and here is how we show you where to explore and indulge in great food and beverage to celebrate yeah yeah and then years later of doing this i am my full-time day job is law enforcement at the time i worked nights and i was running 
at night. I was keeping my nighttime schedule and my off day. I've always done that over the course of my career. And about a third of my 23 years uh, in law enforcement has been on nights. So whenever I'm assigned to nights, I, I keep that schedule year round. Yep. And I think it helped as far as you know staving off problems with getting sick due to flip-flopping your schedule and kept me active and helped keep some of the weight off. But over the years, as you get older, as you get into assignments that are maybe more sedentary, as you just get into bad habits or into positions that are more stressful, sometimes you turn to food to to blow off steam, to Mm. pass time, eating when you're boredom eating, whatever the case may be. Mm. And over the years, my weight crept up. And mm-hmm. where you started your running journey over th- or around 300 pounds, mm-hmm. mine, I actually got heavier as time went on. Well, I think I did a bounce back because I lost. But then, like you said, it's when you change positions or when you have a specialty assignment. And I've had a couple of those in my career along the way as we've been running. It does become stressful when you are on stage or when there's pressure in a big project at work or when you're feeling the stress of family health related issues that can weigh on you. And if you have a crutch, which is food or beverage or both, then that can negatively impact your health. And if you don't manage that, I mean, there's balance in life. But that was definitely not balanced over those years after I started We started running, and I had those specialty assignments in my own career as well, and the health-related issues from family members. True. Yeah. So you you started out heavier, got lighter. I started out lighter, got heavier overall. I mean, there was ups and downs, but overall. And then uh, this was, gosh, now we're coming upon year three. Yeah. We're approaching the third anniversary of when I drove myself to the hospital. Right. Uh, one day at work, I just didn't feel right. And there's not really a, a great way to describe it. 2018, yeah. Yeah. And I said, yeah, I just don't feel right. I'm going to drive up to the hospital. And I did and went in and I said, hey, I, I can't really tell you what it is. It's just I know that I feel off and I'd like to get you guys to check me out. Well, they hooked me up, checked my blood pressure, and it's 220 over 110. And that is stroke territory. There's nothing scarier than having your spouse call you at work and tell you that they're, that he's driving himself to the ER because he doesn't feel right. And you don't know what it is. And no matter how many times you say I'm okay, she doesn't believe you. No, just I'm like food for thought. Peace out. I'm, I'm going to see what's wrong. So they, they admit me f- for the, the afternoon. I mean, I actually get to go home same day. I didn't stay overnight. They get me regulated, get me off to my doctor. And a couple of days later, I do the same thing. And I'm like, yeah, I came in a couple of days ago. I'm still not feeling right. Blood pressure was still high. They changed up the meds, got it down, sent me home. I still have my appointment with the doctor. Right. I get to the doctor and then it was some back and forth, getting my medications regulated and getting my BP down to where they wanted it to be. Scary time. And I was like, all right, I need to to do something and really get radical and and make a, a definitive change. So I started looking for inspiration and I'm looking at books, I'm looking at podcasts, I'm, I'm looking everywhere and I ended up stumbling upon a book called Presto, How I Made 100 Pounds Disappear by Penn Jillette of Penn and Teller fame. Mm. And I was also listening at the time to Kevin Smith's podcast. He was doing one called Fat Man on Batman, and now it's called Batman. Batman Beyond, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And both of those gentlemen experienced tremendous weight loss, and Kevin actually experienced a heart attack. And his heart attack happened after I started my weight loss journey, but I was following along with him when all that happened. Mm. I ended up listening to what Penn Gillette said in his book and going, you know what? I can do anything I put my mind to and I, I got to do something because, you know, just running was not cutting it. I was still pounding out 
half marathon training yeah. runs. Sure. I was we were still getting ready doing for Star Wars. Speed work twice a week and eating was killing me. Yeah. So I said, I'm going to do something completely different. And I've done everything over the years, whether it's uh, the Body for Life workout, which I put on a ton of muscle in a short amount of time, mm-hmm. but I hate eating like five times a day. I've done the low carb thing. I've done the, the nothing but carb thing. You name it. I, I've done it over the years and all the things. And I'm not look, wasn't looking for a fat. I was looking for a, just a, a way of eating lifestyle change. So Penn Gillette talks about going whole food plant-based in his book. And he, and you actually, you talk about running and pounding out as we were training for Star Wars that year, when we, I can vividly remember you saying, I think I'm going to do this, and I want you to listen to Pendulette's book as we drive up to Orlando for the Run Disney Star Wars race. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, he narrates the book himself. He's great. And actually, you had already started. I had. I did. His plan is very radical at first. It starts out with a two week mono diet where you're eating nothing but potatoes. And by the way, he has the best disclaimer in the world. <laughs> um, it's not safe for work. It's not going to, we couldn't the do whole it. Book's not safe The whole for book's work. not safe for work. Uh, but the disclaimer alone, we, we'll get our, our, we'll get you an explicit tag. But long story short, nothing that we're talking about here should be construed as medical advice. Right. Um, do not Convince. listen to us. Consult listen your, to your doctor. I am under doctor. doctor's care. Yeah. Amy's under doctor's care. Yes. And my physician knows what I'm doing. So, mm-hmm. And I started from that level and they were like, Hey, you know what? If it's going to get weight off of you and get your blood pressure down, do whatever you got to do. If you're talking about doing a two week mono diet, the doctor's funny. He's like, it's not going to last you. He goes, if you do two weeks, I'll be shocked. And if you um, do two weeks on it, you're going to be so bored with whatever you're eating. You'll go back to eating regular food and you're not going to starve yourself. Right. So I ended up doing the, the, two week mono diet that he talks about and then reintroducing plants uh, or plant-based food slowly as your system kind of gets reaccustomed as your uh, taste buds get accustomed to tasting things. Cause you'd be shocked at eating nothing but potatoes for two weeks. Tastes like a whole lot of nothing. Yes, it does. <laughs> but what that does is it took the social component out of eating, took the eating for fun out of eating and just kind of got you in the right headspace. And made you more receptive to bringing in that more vegetables and I've variety always, through greens, yeah, beans, cruciferous veggies, vegetables, yes. greens, nuts, seeds, yeah. um, beans. Mm-hmm. But it was funny because it. I mean, you lose so much weight at the beginning because you're losing water. You mm. shed about you know, a gallon of water weighs eight pounds. So the first eight pounds you lose is all water weight. Then it's about 0.7 to 0.9 pounds per day on the plan. And over the course of three months of going to whole food plant-based and giving myself one day, one meal a week, which was what we were doing well, for the podcast. We. Well, you didn't start yeah. out doing it. Right. And cool. then, okay. Well, yeah, well I, yeah. I had a two week head start on. I know, I know. But I we'll ended up that. dropping seventy pounds and seventy points off my blood pressure and getting my blood pressure under control and at healthy levels. Amy sees the progress. Well, in I, the I, first two weeks, yeah, I would say so. April of twenty eighteen was when we were going to Star Wars and and we were. You were having me listen to Pendulette, but I would just like in my own journey to kind of take a step back and go, 2017 was kind of rough. And I, we usually love, love going to Jeff Galloway's half marathon weekend. Mm -hmm. And I can remember, and you can go back one of our, our Hallmark video episodes when we still did video episodes is episode number 17 when it was a flashback to Jeff Galloway's half marathon where I rolled my ankle, not even before mile one, not because I was running, but because I wasn't looking where I was going. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I wasn't looking where I was going. I was reaching for something in my pocket. I was looking away from the road and I rolled my ankle on some uneven pavement in the first quarter mile even and didn't want to quit. And that is a a great episode for showing you what endurance 
and overcoming adversity and having a great support system will do. Mm-hmm. It, it, so the recovery from that was hard. Was hard because I couldn't 100% train the way I wanted to. I, ha- I had to let it heal. It was pretty bad. Now the doctor said you'd, have, you'd heal faster if you'd have broken it. Yeah. And a lot of people said sometimes a break is better to have in terms of healing and recovery. But so I recovered from that and we were starting to train for Star Wars half marathon weekend. And I, I just, it, it was, and, and then you had your crisis, which scared me to death because I never want to be without my best friend and partner. So at the same time, watching you start that and listening to that audio book, because he is just so matter of fact and upfront and no holds barred, truthful about the journey. And funny. And yeah, on funny. top of that, he's making you laugh the whole time, but he's dropping truth yeah. bombs like crazy. And then seeing, yes, there's a, a challenge to getting started with that, but seeing results. And then also having a support system and being committed to do it and help and support and encourage each other. Yes. So I saw you do that with great success. We went to Star Wars. I had not yet started. We crossed that finish line. We came home. And I can remember being at my dad's. My dad was inducted to the Hall of Fame, the the football coaching Hall of Fame that night. And that was the the last I don't know meal before I said I, I want to start with you because I know I can do better. Yes, I crossed that finish line, but I know I can cross that finish line feeling better. And I know I want to go back to Jeff's week weekend just killing it. Yeah. So so along with you, I would say I I lost sixty to seventy pounds over the course of three to four months. Yeah. Yeah. And we've kept most of that off. Uh, Mm -hmm. Now this year I've let some of it creep back on, especially around the holidays and COVID and yeah. And and, I mean, and the pandemic, I mean, that's a different kind of stress that nobody's ever tried to manage before, but well, arguably people in 1918 to try to manage it some in this (laughs) <laughs> lifetime in our lifetime yes i know you know what i'm saying so, i know all of you know what i'm saying <laughs> yes so you know, all in all it's been a, a great lifestyle choice for us yeah and that coupled with running has allowed us to be more healthy to mm-hmm. get smaller to get faster to do better do more yeah and in 2018 amy went back to Galloway's half marathon up in Atlanta. And yeah. you can listen to that one in episode 47. She not only beat the previous year due to the ankle injury, she got a PR. Yeah. And I mean, even the episodes before that that are chronicling the, our return to uh, wine and dine, right? It, I just felt better, stronger, and... Y- I mean, I j- it just made our life, our show, our running better. Yeah, and, and please don't take this for us proselytizing about no. eating plant-based. That's not what we're saying. No. Find something that works for you. We're just sharing our experience right. with plant-based eating and mm-hmm. what it has done for us. Now, in order... And we'll be the first to say it. I mean, Penn Gillette talks about he's an unethical vegan. He's not eating, he doesn't eat vegan because of ethics choices. It's purely for health. I, I kind of adopted that. Same thing. So six days a week, plant-based eating. Day seven, eating and drinking for the show. Right. And even then, it wasn't like crazy all day long. Now, there's always times, the, the rare and appropriate times when you're on vacation, if you decide you're going to, this weekend, I'm going to allow myself but then get right back on. And that's what you got to do for it's that balance. It's yeah. about balance, I would say. Yeah. And if you have that balance and you don't allow the stress and uh, the the enjoyment of eating 
to run away with you if you set it to be a balanced kind of approach and you have support system and you do it together. That's where our story is today. That's where it comes to right now. We we're doing it together. We and I guess the moral of the story is there have been ups, there have been downs. We have been through a challenging year this past year like like everybody, some out there more so than we have been. But this is how we got to where we are, and I think that all the struggles and the ups and the downs and finding what works for us thats and finding what works for you and embracing that and living for what makes you happy and what makes you passionate, like our show. Exactly. And this way of life for us. So you got to find what works for you. And... That's how we came to truly embrace, accomplish, explore, and indulge, which is our philosophy. Accomplishing, exploring, and indulging with the podcast. Can we share things that will inspire you as runners? Tips, tricks, training, but also destinations when you can travel. Yeah, places, the people in those places. Mm -hmm. Those are things that you can look forward to, that you can be passionate about. Yeah. And of course, food and drink. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being passionate about food and drink. If you're a human being, you want to eat and drink. Things you, that you enjoy. You have a genetic imperative to go out and eat and get as many calories as you can uh-huh. so that you can survive and yeah. all that. So that's not something to shy away from. That's not something to deny. And we're not doing that. Oh. And again, we're just sharing what has worked for us. And I would say that in the healthful eating and in the recipes that we will share throughout 2021 and and as part of our our lifestyle of plant-based eating, whole food plant-based eating that we have adopted, I think that we have found enjoyment in food that way in a way that I have not had with any previous kind of lifestyle. Right. So the these are all the things that we want to share with you because we enjoy them the places that we love to go and eat and drink when it is that day seven and by the way it's not that you're not going to get some amazing meat-based dishes from us because you will you absolutely will (laughs) but just know that for the six days a week we're going to earn that meal we're talking about yeah and we are we're also a resource for those meals during the runcation but also those meals at home when you're looking for something flavorful and healthy. When you're training. When you're training. And we're going to be focusing a lot on training because Amy is on the path to recovery. Yes. From her knee surgery. This year, yes. And I had talked about this, and I would kind of started it with our patrons. You know, I had talked about doing like my own little series, like a weekly update type thing, and I learned some things. Uh, Number one, I learned that the wrong time to decide to do like an extra podcasting project is when you're about to embark on a big career change. Yeah. And I also learned that, and and it's exactly what we talked about here, and this is a little bit of inside inside baseball for everybody. (laughs) When we're talking about baseball we're talking about stress eating yeah. and comfort eating yeah. and i had all these plans of what i was going to do over the holiday season from november into december mm. okay yeah i put on weight when i was expecting and intending to drop weight mm. so i am now at and i'm going to pull my weight up you literally are. I'm at 277.5. That means I have gained 19 and a half pounds. Hmm. Now, that is, I've got to get down there or get get rid of those pounds. That puts Mm -hmm. me back to where I was wanting to be. And then on top of all that, I had intended to to do a, you know, that little podcast series for the patrons and kind of chronicling my attempt to get off my blood pressure meds. Well, clearly, yes. since I've gained weight, that's not happening just yet. But also, my, my doctor's appointment got moved to a telehealth thing, and I'm not doing anything over telehealth. 
No. Mm. I'm just not a believer in that. You like traditional visits. I want to see the doctor, okay. ask my questions, okay. all that stuff, and I want to do it on their scale. Yeah. And their blood pressure cuff and all that. So Yeah. So that said, I, I, when I get everything rescheduled, I'm going to get back to doing something. I can't guarantee it's going to be a, a weekly thing, mm. but I'm going to get back to doing something starting soon, and that's going to be extra in addition for all of our patrons. Wonderful. Just kind of sharing that, but I wanted to get everything kind of ready, and I don't want to say it was a New Year's resolution because that's not really. No. It was just I needed to get past the holidays and out of that feeling of newness from work. Does that make a, sense? A new job, it's very stressful. Yeah. It's I very would agree. stressful, <laughs> especially a promotion with higher level expectations. And no matter how good you are at your job, and you are, and how much I know you're going to nail it, there is still. I get you to write my review. There is still, it, I mean, in your head, you're. What am I not doing? What do I need to do? How do I? The the first year you do something, a new position like that, it's figuring it all out. Yeah. So again, it was bad timing on my part. So for the patrons that were looking forward to that, hey, sorry about that. But more stuff is coming. We it's just a matter. Some more bonus content. Well, too. yeah, but it's not the same of what I had initially started. But yeah, so I ended up packing on the weight over the holidays and... That is, now, the good news is, actually, I got all the way up to 281.4, oh. and that was on January 2nd. That was my way in on January 4th, down to 277.5, and that's, nice. yeah, that's just in two days, and that's huh. the whole food plant-based. And I'm right there no with you. salt, sugar, fat. I'm right there with you. I'm not, I don't have my numbers pulled up. I'm not going to, no, no. like, guesstimate or whatever but i can tell you that i am with you and in the right headspace because that the headspace in the holidays and just what having the injury and the surgery and it impacted it takes my, a toll my eating and and stress level and the, the different holidays the way 2020 wound down that it, it impacted that journey for me too. And now we're getting refocused and getting to that positive headspace and supporting each other. And hopefully the podcast will be a resource for maintaining training habits for when we can do great virtual races or even better live races again. And and those healthy habits, but also when we can travel again and we're going to indulge on that one day or at that one vacation, where are you going to go? We want to be resourced for that too. So now that I've talked about just how much weight I packed on over the holidays, let's talk food. <laughs> <laughs> no, in all seriousness, we, we are going to be really covering a lot more of the training aspects in the coming weeks. Yeah, yeah. Amy's recovery, my running training. And as we head into the eating portion, we are going to be doing a lot more of the food to support you in your training. Yes. So Because that was in the survey on social media, people want to know. You never talk about your pre-race meals pretty much your or your pre-training run meals. No. Or the ones when you're eating whole food, plant-based. What do you do? Yeah. Now, for short runs, I don't typically eat anything. I might have a little bit of coffee. But sure. for like, like uh, three miles or under? Maybe not. I don't really eat anything. Maybe not. So Over three miles, I usually have something. Yeah. Even if it's just a banana. Yeah. What about you? Well, I like to have something for the longer runs. I do. And a longer run for me could be four or five miles, especially coming back from this mm -hmm. and recovering. So... But this is also a daily driver of ours, like a daily breakfast that we love. 
Yeah, we wanted to find some stuff that we could make that was kind of grab and go and very easy for when Amy's at work and she can just pack her you know, lunch, take it with her, take breakfast and you know, maybe eat it in the car before getting out and going into the into work, whatever the case mm-hmm. may be. Mm-hmm. And I've always been an oatmeal fan. And in the last couple of years, I've really taken to doing the cold soaked oats or They're overnight so oats. It's good stuff. It's so simple. Yeah. And if you look in our refrigerator, it looks like a stack of small Tupperware style containers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because we pre make these. We make for the entire work week, we make two a day for five days a week. So, so one we do, for you, one we for do me. 10 servings at a time. Yeah. And it is so simple and it is so easy to do and, and to customize it how you want it. Yeah. But I'll give you guys an idea of what we do. And give it a shot. Or feel free to modify it to meet whatever your needs and your flavor preferences. Yeah. And your training needs in terms of nutrition. Now, a lot of questions will you know, come up. What kind of oats? If we're going to do cold soaked oats, I don't like the quick cooked oats because they tend to be smaller, chopped Ooh, up. It's like less hearty. Yeah, it's less hearty of a bite. So I tend to go with the old fashioned rolled oats. Ah. You could do steel cuts. Mm-hmm. But they have to soak longer. Ah, I mean, at least yeah, overnight. Yeah. They're really not great until day two, but they are the hardiest as far as mouth feel. Yeah. So basically, we'll line up these Tupperwares and we'll put a cup of those into the the Tupperware containers. A half the, cup. The, the, the ha, uh, half, half cup of oats. Half cup of oats. Yes. And then we'll do a whole cup of almond milk. Yeah. And this is going to vary from person to person. So if you like, if you're like us and you're going plant-based, pick your favorite flavor of almond milk. I like silk brand. There's the other Blue Diamond. Blue Diamond makes There's a bunch of them. And none of them are sponsors of our show. They're not. uh, We love that. But they are not all created equal. But they're not all created equal. Find that the brand that works for you. Otherwise, your favorite milk, whatever the case may be. Sure. So it's a half a cup of the uncooked oats, a cup of your milk of choice, and then that is it. Seal it up, pop it in the fridge, and it's going to be ready to eat overnight. And you just have to get used to, some people are like, I grew up eating hot oatmeal. Give it a shot. And I grew, I'm one of those who grew up eating hot oatmeal or like cream of wheat and that kind of thing. And I still love those. I still love those. I think the smaller ones, the smaller oats are like this, what do you call them? The steel cut oats? Well, the, or well, the steel cuts are, they are smaller, but they're very, yeah, they're more toothsome texture. Yeah. Yeah, so I definitely like the ones we use, and it. I just never did it as a kid, but I enjoy it so much now. Yes. Yeah, and I like our strategy of not topping them with anything and just packing them, just the, the milk of choice and the oats of choice. And then the day of, before I'm going to go to work, in the, I'll open up the container that I'm packing and I will throw in raw almonds, flax seeds, chia seeds, and a, a mixture of berries, whatever looked good in the produce section or at the farmer's market. Yes. And a lot of the time that'll be, it could be a cut up banana, it could be raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, you know strawberries even oh yeah so yeah what we have learned over the years is don't preload your oats with your berries because number one the the berry color and flavor the sugar start to to seep out yeah so it can discolor it but also you know with the added sugar in there sometimes that can cause things to start to go bad faster and the nuts you gotta add them right right before you're gonna eat it nobody wants to wants things getting soggy that shouldn't be and your oatmeal starts out as a soggy base right yeah i do a a very similar i do a tablespoon of of flax seeds and that is you'll see it listed as flax seed or linseed it is a great source of of carbohydrates and fiber like 11% of your daily fiber in in a, a tablespoon. 
mm. in one shot right there. A lot of micronutrients as well. You also, chia seeds, they give you a great boost of fiber as well. So in, in a one ounce serving, you're talking 10 grams of fiber. It's also got other micronutrients, mm. magnesium, calcium, iron, and they always talk about these phytonutrients, these phytochemicals that are harder to get and just micronutrients that you wouldn't be able to mm. get otherwise if you had it plain. Mm. I love cacao nibs. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm a dark chocolate fan, and this is basically the cocoa or cacao bean cracked into small pieces They're and very crunchy. fermented. But it's all chocolate, by the way, when part of the processing is to dry and ferment it. So yeah. so that's normal. It basically tastes like unsweetened dark chocolate because it's yeah. unsweetened dark chocolate in its natural form. Yeah. It's great stuff. For sure. And you're getting things like magnesium, phosphorus, again, more fiber, copper, manganese. So great stuff and great toppings. I also like to do raw almonds. Yes. For a little bit of crunch. Yep. And uh, yeah, I do the berry the thing too. Berries. I'm I'm a huge blueberry fanatic. I'll eat blueberries any every day. So I do a little mixture of uh, blueberries, raspberries, and uh, blackberries when you know we can get them seasonally. Mm. Yeah. So great stuff. Total for what we're talking about here. If you're going with almond milk, you're looking at about 400 calories. Now, that's a ish, yeah. depending. Now, you can certainly get smaller breakfasts and you can get less calories, but this is also a great one for pre long run. Mm-hmm. And I know that for my long run, six miles or more, I'm easily burning uh, 500, 600 calories. Mm. So it's actually, I end up being calorie in a calorie deficit after yeah. the run. Yeah. And again, I'm trying to get micronutrients and phytonutrients where I can throughout the day. And this is just a flavorful, healthful way to get the day started and have a good breakfast and a good meal pre-run that doesn't upset my stomach mm. and doesn't make me go looking for a porta potty in the long run. That is true. And those are all in spite of the fiber you, content. Yeah, you have to keep those in mind, especially depending on are you going to run with a group with like a run club or are you, are you going to have access to a bathroom or how do you have you got to pre-game your nutrition to be successful in your training. Yes. I'll say that. Yeah, very much so. So I think the the secret um, ingredients here. Secret sauce. uh, The secret sauce of this dish (laughs) is the chia seeds because you get a lot of extra protein, uh, a a lot of bang for your buck, and the manganese and magnesium and your cocoa nibs or the cacao nibs. Mm. So fancy cacao. Cocoa nibs, those You're things, classy, real crunchy, great wow. flavor, and you got your antioxidants and everything. Those are super nice little flavor bombs, but also they give you just some extra stuff that you want to get in your diet. Yeah. So try that. Give that a shot for your next long run. Let us know how it tastes. If you try it. If you try it. Let us know your variation on the recipe. If you're going to try some different ingredients Mm -hmm. and uh, let us know what you do. We'd love to see pictures. We'd love to get hear from you. Hashtag runny drink podcast. Yeah. Hashtag runcation nation. And send us what you've done. Info at runeatdrink.net. We would love it. Now we have a really refreshing and healthful beverage to talk about. But before we go on, we want to say a quick thank you to our patrons. Yes. Oh, before we go on, we must say thank you to all of our patrons. You've helped us support with your support and you've helped us grow. You've allowed us to achieve, especially in 2020 when times have been tough. Let's just say. And we achieved our goal of 10 patrons in 2020, right there at the end before New Year's. Actually, on New Year's Eve, we got our newest fan, Kristen Seneviva Iovine, that we actually met at Disney Springs our last visit there. That was so awesome. So, Kristen, thank you so much for becoming a patron. Your $2 contribution each month 
will help us continue to bring our Runcation Nation a great show in 2021. I just got the newest piece of equipment for the Runny Drink Podcast Studio delivered today. Did you know? That I was able to purchase as a result of our patrons. That is the stand. And the oh, boom, you didn't tell me this. The boom arm for our web camera. Yay. where We're going to be able to do some broadcasts from the studio. Oh. That arrived today. Of course, the camera's not here yet. Oh. The table I'm going to be clamping it to is not here yet, but that's beside the point. All in it's good all coming. It'll actually all be here Wednesday. My goal is to have it set up maybe ahead of our beer chat. Oh, well, it's a goal. It's a goal. It's a goal. And what you all do, it provides us the ability to continue bringing content to you when being a travel podcast for runners is a little crazy and in this challenging time. So at patreon.com slash runny drink podcast, we have three different levels of monthly support, $2, $5 or $10. And each level has its own special perks. Yeah. Patrons get are going to get to look behind the scenes as I start to put this together, they're going to get access to special interviews, more cooking demos this year, exclusive tastings of our favorite food and beverage, including bonus items from great, great places that didn't initially make it into the show. Oh, Stuff maybe we held back mm. for extra special content. Plus, our insiders get special audio and video messages from us. Extras from great interviews, post-interview content, and more. And I'm starting today, actually, on a special bonus just for patrons about my recovery and my journey back to running. Nice. Yeah. So we hope that you guys will check it out. Go to patreon.com slash runny drink podcast and learn more and become a patron today. And as always, we thank you guys so much for your support of the Runny Drink Podcast. So let's talk drinks. Healthy Drinks. Healthy beverages. Yay. Yeah. We mentioned it over the last hour and we are going to go a little bit long today. Yeah. A little but bit. But whole food plant-based is normally the way we go, but we were watching one of our favorite cooking channels and we were getting some ideas and this is also the result of listener feedback True. wanting some stuff that isn't necessarily alcoholic. Right. And we've talked about it. I think last year on our at the beginning of 2020 when we talked about our story, we talked about how we like the soda stream. I love as the a soda tool. Stream. Yes. Yeah. And how we just like that kind of fizzy water to be able to add fruit to and or just judge up the the water experience mm -hmm. without added sodium or sugar and that kind of thing. Absolutely. So this is great. We this was inspired I watch reality shows like The Next Iron Chef from right. Food Network and things like that. And I was discover I I discovered Chef Eric Greenspan on that and, and he has been a frequent visitor on some of Guy Fieri's shows. Right. And uh like Guy's Ranch Kitchen, I think it was called. Yeah, something like that. Like I, his kitchen I want his outdoor kitchen. Outdoor kitchen's insane. I just I want his outdoor kitchen, but he was on a special about eating healthier in the new year. And he featured a drink that was not alcoholic and it was called a chili mango agua fresca. Yeah, and when you hear agua fresca, you're like fresh water, freshened up water. It's a beverage that consists of water and sugar with fruit, grain, or seeds added for flavoring. And the, when it's prepared, the flavor is kind of in between like a fruit-infused water like we were talking about yeah, and a fruit juice. Yeah. So it's if you imagine that on one end you got like lightly flavored water and on the other end fruit juice, this is kind of falling in the middle, depending on how you prepare it. Yeah, and you were talking about how it's a beverage consisting of water and sugar. We tend not to use white sugar. There's none in our house at all. In the preparation of beverages. Right. Any kind of beverage. So we try to go with a healthier option as we prepare. Yeah. Now, Chef Greenspan, his recipe, and we're going to link to it. Mm -hmm. This yeah. one, I think, goes to foodnetwork.com, right? Mm -hmm. His is so simple, and we tried it, and it is delicious. Three ripe mangoes. Yeah. You peel them, you pit them, and you dice them up. 
Or you can use the frozen, already cubed up mango pieces from the freezer aisle. Yes. And we happen to have both in the house. We've, yeah. done, we've now done it both ways. Yeah. He tosses in three sprigs of fresh mint and one and a half teaspoons of honey. And that's where the sugar component comes from in his recipe. We didn't have honey. We used agave nectar instead. Yeah. I like agave nectar. Gives almost a, like a marshmallowy finish. Mm. I love the flavor of agave nectar. Yeah. And then a tablespoon of chili powder. Blend it. Yeah. Now, it's super simple. You blend that You at, along with four cups of water. Yeah. That's the key. If you just blend it as is, you end up with a smoothie. That's true. So you do it with the water. You do it with the water. That thins it way out. Mm -hmm. You blend it until it's smooth. And then you strain that mixture over ice. Yeah. So it's, a, so it's more of a beverage and less of a smoothie. Yes. And, and you can use a, just your regular kitchen strainer to do that. Mm -hmm. It's so simple. That's it. That's the whole recipe. Yeah. But here's the real kicker. If you want to have an optional indulgence. Yeah. What does that sound like to you, Aim? An optional indulgence. You can have a, a shot of tequila. Because it sounds an awful like a, a lot like a mango um, margarita. margarita. To me. Yeah. yeah. So uh, a shot of tequila in your agua fresca. Yeah. Now, we <laughs> made... like a margarita. Yeah. So we made this here at home. Yeah. And we did some other things different. We, we didn't use the honey because we had the agave nectar, and we are not big fans of mint. No, I'm not. Only in a mojito. In mojito specifically. Yeah. Otherwise, not as big of a fan of that, but we, we did use the chili powder. We did use the mango, and I'll tell you what, it is absolutely refreshing. Yeah. It is a beautiful sunset orange color mm -hmm. and if you're using the, the chili powder it gives a deep red so it darkens the, up the the drink a little bit mm. and then if you garnish on top just sprinkle a little bit of the chili powder right on top it's very it's a nice contrast so you get this great sweetness of the mango with the savoriness of the chili powder uh, and a little bit of heat it's like a little bit of bite but it's not jalapeno bite no with the seeds like how sometimes jalapenos can vary in their hotness yes it's not like that it's just like a warming right and i think that the fruit balances so very well and because of in, in chili powder when you get it it has a little bit of cumin in there there's a smoky hint as well mm. so you're getting the smoky sweet little bit of heat thing going on yeah very good mm -hmm. But then we got experimental. We did. Because you came home and I was like, okay, so we have watermelon in the house. We try to keep watermelon in the house. I love it. As long as we can. Uh, it's hard to get in and out of season, whatever. But we have some watermelon. We have some lime. How would that be with the chili? Well, we experimented and we found out that it, you can basically do the exact same thing. So yeah. we had basically uh, four cups of watermelon chopped, mm. four cups of water, put it in the blender, mm -hmm. squirt of lime juice, a little bit of the agave nectar, blend that up, strain it over ice, garnished with a lime. That's actually, I think you used that photo in the I did. episode artwork. I did. Wow. I liked that one. I think it was easier to strain, too. Oh, it was definitely easier to strain. But yeah. it, I also, I just, I, I prefer watermelon to mango generally anyway. I know. <laughs> and yeah, I, I really liked that one. Yeah. So I think you could mix it up and you could interplay different spices with different fruits and, and different sources of sugar, depending on what you want to add. Yes. Or you could leave the sugar out completely. Yeah. yeah. You can also, if you want, you can keep back the pulp that you're filtering out and yeah. maybe use that in another recipe if you want. Or you don't have to filter it and it becomes more of a smoothie. Yeah. It, it's just, it changes the consistency a little bit. Yeah. And like I said, this is just a, a healthful way to get yourself some great flavor 
And again, the option is always there to add a little bit of tequila or mezcal to something. Mezcal would give it a smoky kind of vibe in terms of making turning it into adult beverage. Yes. Yes. So, so that's the drink for this week, the Agua yeah. Fresca. And if you Google Agua Frescas, you will find hundreds if not thousands of recipes out there many different combinations but just depending on what's at the farmer's market or what's at the grocery store what's fresh you can kind of interplay now that you have the basic components and i would say this is a great excuse to maybe try some other fruits that you're wanting to get exposed to mm -hmm. maybe you don't want maybe you like the flavor but you don't like the texture well cool here's a great way to get that flavor without the texture yeah so give it a shot Show us your agua frescas. Yes, we want to know what combinations work for you. And send those to info at runeatdrink.net or post them on Instagram. And tag us. Tag us and hashtag. Run Eat Drink Podcast, Runcation Nation. And we are at Run Eat Drink Podcast on Instagram and Facebook and Run Eat Drink Pod on Twitter. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, that is going to do it for this kickoff episode of 2021 next week uh, we're hoping that this got you kind of going and ready and excited to yeah. take on the new year and get healthier and and if you're doing the resolution thing to embrace that resolution but next week we are going to give you another tool for your tool belt to help you meet and exceed your goals in 2021 mm-hmm Yes, a, we have a special interview with a member of a local running group, and she talks a lot about impact, but it's it's also great for us as back-of-the-pack runners who may be kind of hesitant to do that kind of thing. That was a great interview with a lot of tips and tricks for that. So we're going to give you a great insight on how a running group might help you. So stay tuned for that. Meanwhile... We hope you'll run over to Apple Podcasts. I see what you did there. <laughs> and provide us a rating and review. Our Runcation Nation has grown so much this year, and we want to keep it going. A way you can help us do that that's totally free is to give us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. By doing that, it actually helps the algorithm, and it's all about the recent ratings and reviews mm -hmm. it would really help us out and if you've done it in the past i think you can do it again mm, I, if yours has dropped off if it's dropped if off if it's dropped off i think so we'd really appreciate it if you guys would go over and do that and help yeah. people find us when they're searching on apple podcasts yeah that would really mean a lot to us sometimes i cry when i read comments from there oh yeah and some help us improve absolutely so, Thank you for joining us on your long run, your commute to work, around the house, wherever you are. We're so thankful that you tuned in. And, and thank you for hanging for this extra long episode. I'm your host, Amy. And I'm your co-host, Dana. Stay safe, stay well, and we will accomplish, explore, and indulge with you really soon. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We're having another great year thanks to your support. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Run, Eat, Drink podcast. And on Twitter, we're Run, Eat, Drink pod. You can also give us a call at 941-677-2733 or send us an email at info at runeatdrink.net. Visit our website at runeatdrink.net and click on the subscribe link so you don't miss a minute. Find out how you can support the show at patreon.com slash runeatdrinkpodcast. Accomplish, explore, and indulge right along with us. We'll talk to you next time.